Good afternoon, everybody. Coach Mark Fay here on the ones and twos, subbing in for Alexander the Great Gruskin. Looking forward to having an actual interaction with one of college tennis's greats, one of the Mount Rushmore coaches on the women's side, Roland Thornquist from the Florida Gators, joining us today to talk a little bit about his team in preparation for the Florida State battle at uh, Orlando on College Match Day, February 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern. So again, Coach Roland, thanks so much for joining us. Looking forward to chatting a little bit and getting to know how things are doing in Gatorland. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super excited. So Roland, uh, reading your bio, I tell you, it is Actually, I, I needed glasses. I needed like a little bit of a, I needed some lunch. I actually had to pace myself like a marathon. So many things, so many accomplishments. But to me, the, the things that clearly stand out, four-time NCAA champions, 11-time SEC, eighth in all-time winning percentage in college tennis. That is a lot of Pepto-Bismol, my friend. That is a lot of gut checks, a lot of four threes. I, it's really, I joked around with Jenny Hyde this morning and I just said, I for three days of summer, I get to do what you guys do. And I have an utmost respect because I could barely make it through three days plus a travel day trying to do a little bit of a college tennis format myself in my little world. So hats off to everything that you've done and accomplished. And thanks so much for joining us. So I guess to, to start off, you've kind of not been in the championship conversation for a couple of years. There's been a few teams that have stepped up. Obviously, Calvus finally got his first title, uh, and they've been kind of the, the team to beat for a few years. Seems like you're back in business, though. Lady Gators, uh, 15 in the nation uh, last year to finish, nine in the nation here uh, preseason to start. How do you feel developmentally, and where is the, the team at this present moment? Well, you know, candidly, I thought we were way better than 15th last year. We just ran into Buzzsaw playing at UNC in the round of 16. And that, you know, that that's just not going to be anybody's friend, to be honest. I thought we handled ourselves uh, ourselves well. Um, we won the doubles point on Carolina up there last year. And I think we could have beaten a lot of teams to make the, you know, the final eight run, uh, you know, if we hadn't played at Carolina now. You know, we needed to win perhaps one more match during the regular season to play somebody else other than the Tar Heels in the round 16. So that's obviously our job. But I'm telling you that just to say that I felt like we were better than 15 last year. And we have added a lot of talent to this this year's team. You know, uh, Kavya certainly is just about as talented as anybody's freshman. And uh, the... Um, you know, the play of uh, uh, Emily, who played five for us last year this fall, has been, uh, uh, you know, remarkable, really. You know, here she is, a walk-on, uh, leading leading the line, really, for us this year. So uh, we're going to roll out a new lineup tomorrow when we play Baylor, and it'll be very, very interesting to see how the kids respond. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like the depth on this team is about as good as on any team that I've had in my 23 years of Florida. Outstanding. I, I feel one grad senior, one regular senior, three juniors, two sophomore, two freshmen. You have sort of that nucleus balance that most coaches are striving for. Everybody would just love to have two, 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 right? So the recruiting and everything is symmetrical and balanced, but that's not how it happens. It's often oblong. It's obtuse. It's not always exactly the way it should be. And I think most coaches have to figure out how to roll with the punches and do everything necessary to give their team a chance, but also bring in the new, obviously Lopez, I know well from being a Midwest girl before she left and obviously mm -hmm. having the old that are on the back end. My curious, I guess my, my first question is, because I've known so many players that have played for you for so many years, do you think you evolved? What has changed in Roland Thornquist's approach to coaching and executing and preparing and building? What are you like now versus 5, 10, 15 years ago? Oh, yeah, for sure I have. Absolutely. I, I think the answer to that is that you have to, right? Uh, our, our players are different. Our format is vastly different from the format we played, you know, during, uh, you know, the years we had those, you know, those four amazing years, 10 to 13. You know, those matches, we excelled, you know, in the five-hour matches. So we had to train accordingly, right? Um, now we're playing three-hour matches, 
And so the way we train is different. Um, yes. So th there's no question that I've changed. I also have, uh, you know, we, we, we haven't done much as far as we haven't lifted a trophy since the national championship in 2017. So um, now I'm, I'm, I'm 53 years old and I've been doing it a long time. You get to the other so side of, of achievement and you get an appreciation for uh, what it takes to be good, you know, and you certainly also learn that if you want to have longevity in this business, you can't just look at lifting trophies as, you know, the mark of an, uh, a successful season. I would tell you some of the, you know, best coaching we've done in my tenure here have been in, you know, non-trophy years. And I would, I would think last year was one of them. I, I thought we, we were fairly young in our lineup last year, had a lot of new players and, um, they grew and got better as the season went on. And, and Jeremy is an excellent teacher and helping along the, you know, uh, making these players grow. And so uh, I do have a different appreciation for the business that we're in. Um, and certainly the last five years have, have helped me uh, grow uh, in, in in having a better perspective, probably. Absolutely. I appreciate that answer. And I'm actually 33 years in next month. Um, oh, what? On, the junior, on the junior side of things. And so <laughs> it is crazy. I, I'm at 55 now last birthday. So I, I actually, you know, those sentiments not just only echoed with me, but really resonated with me. So I appreciated what you just shared. And to go back a little bit, how about this? How about I was at National Hard Courts in San Diego years back with Minor and Dohai playing doubles together. And Dohai is a wreck in the doubles practice because she has a first round match the next morning against a young lady named McCartney Kessler. Uh, she had to play with Dohai being the three seed back then. And McCartney Kessler upset Dohai there in that first round of hardcore. Right. If you remember. And oh, I remember it vividly. That. And now both of those girls from a first round hardcore match in San Diego were out there playing on the big stage in the Australian Open. Dohai had given Coco Golf all kinds of, of challenge in that first set. And Kessler, obviously, you have an unbelievable run there. That's got to make you feel good and, and stay connected cool. to you. I, I talked about that with Jen earlier with Petra Hill. You're actually connecting to young players and athletes and not only just giving them that developmental work, but giving them an opportunity to launch to the next level. Talk a little bit about that journey with Kessler and, and what that meant. I mean, you know, I'll never forget the first time I saw McCartney. She came and played our ITA tournament in Gainesville when she was, I don't know, 13, 14, because her brother was going to play for our men's team. And she ended up playing Peggy Porter in the first round. And I figured oh. I got to take a look at this kid. And so it's June, it's hotter than heck. And I get up in the stands with a towel wrapped around me. And and here's this young, young girl. She was just not afraid. It was just impressive how she wanted to battle Peggy, who was a superstar coming out of high school. And um, I just, I'll never forget the impression she left on me, just the way she competed. And that was exactly what we got for four years from McCartney in Florida. The kid was just a battler, you know, and she's, she moves really well, obviously as a world-class backhand. And we spent the first year trying to teach her how to hit a forehand cross court, you know, because all her forehands went down the line so she could hit a backhand the next shot. So, but right. uh, just a terrific young lady, uh, work ethic, uh, as world class. And, you know, I'm, I'm just so happy for, her, uh, that, uh, you know, she's going to be there to stay now. She's going to have a nice career. Um, her serve has improved. It's going to have to get better to, to, to break in the top 50. I think she knows that, but I mean, uh, I was just really happy to see her play, um, uh, uh, this past few days. Yeah. Outstanding. And so, a lot of the the players that I've known and talk about you in passing, whatever they say that Roland always says, we got to do things the Gator way. So I want to know what exactly does the Gator way? What does that mean when you say that to the young ladies? What does that sort of connect to for anybody that has been part of your coaching tutelage for all these years? You know, the, the interesting part of that is the Florida way we call it is sort of it, 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 it's it's not something that's written down, Mark. Right. But, you know, whenever there's a choice in behavior, right, you know, if something is a good way to, to, to do or or not 
a good way to do it. And for me, and the way we describe it here in Florida, is like our players know that they're supposed to come and work on their game. They're supposed to get here early. They're supposed to go to class. They're supposed to do the best they can in whatever they take on, so on and so forth. That is what we talk about is the Florida way. So it's not like a a manual written down with 10 bullet points that you have to do. It's just sort of like a mindset of being the best you can be. You know, I think that's probably the best way to to um, to describe it is that uh, whenever there's, uh, you know, you, you sort of have the illusion, illusion of choice, right? Like when you're in college and um, that you make the best possible decisions just about every time you have one to make and uh, that you, you know, advance yourself as a player and as a person. Yeah, I think that's great. Wonderful perspective. They're lucky to have you at this stage of their lives. And I I truly feel like all great coaches have these mantras and things, and sometimes they don't even realize that they're part of the actual mission or what they will be known for. But most certainly, I think you put a lot of that on top of them, and it's proof has been in the pudding, clearly. So you got to battle with FSU. Ginny has got you a couple times. Sure. Um, for a period, she had not at all, and now she's gotten a couple Ws over you. What types of challenges do you think that uh, Florida State poses in a battle like this on college match day? Well, first of all, uh, Jen has always done a good job, right? She's a, I think she's a tremendous teacher. We worked together at North Carolina many, many moons ago, you know, before she became a head coach. So I know what kind of work she does behind the scenes. And um, so, you know, even when we had a nice little streak there against them, I knew the quality, uh, you know, of which we were going to see on match day that was coming against us. She just had better players now, right, than she did perhaps the first 10 years or so at Florida State. So obviously that's going to pose a much greater challenge for us. Perhaps our talent level dipped a little bit, you know, since 2017 overall. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think there was two or three years there, you know, that she got us maybe five times in a row. So, you know, that was that was not great. Um so we know now every time we play Florida State, it's going to be a battle. They compete hard. They play um, tough, aggressive doubles. Obviously, with Dick Allen in the doubles lineup, you know that she's going to come at you from sun up to sundown. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough for us. I think this year what's different for us is that we're we're really deep, right? We're going to have players at four, five, and six that have played one, two, and three for us before. And so I'm hoping that um, not just this match with Florida State, but overall this season, that our depth is going to really help uh, help our performance and get us some wins. Uh, uh, and and maybe that'll start tomorrow and and continue with uh, with Florida State. I hope. Outstanding, because you you definitely are. Hey, well, the kickoff weekend obviously gives everybody a little bit of a litmus test. You get a sense. You get a couple punches in the stomach and see how your team responds. Because uh, you just never know, right? You've been practicing. You think everything is good. But until the lights come on, you don't mm. really know what you have, right? But with Florida State and you've got Michigan before indoors, right away, you're going to get some information about where this team actually lies and see if it's affirmed your your actual intentions about what this season could bring for the, for the Gators. So I think my next question is relative to the SEC-ACC rivalry, I think that before SEC was just the big – the big sister and ACC was a little sister in the house, but now recently here, here comes Virginia, here comes North Carolina on the women's side, ACC is starting to bring home the big trophies. And now SEC, no doubt, let's face it, six teams in the top 25. It is formidable. Obviously Georgia, Florida, A&M, Auburn, Vandy, Tennessee, all top 25. So the, the actual battles that you have week in week out, solidify the ranking and give you a chance. But do you feel right now, maybe a little bit more pride, like conference pride when you go into some of these matches to play early on and kind of let people know, hey, you know, SEC is where it's at. Yeah, I think in general, we've sort of always felt like uh, the SEC is uh, elite, right? Now, there's been some years, obviously, where, um, you know, the depth of the league wasn't what it normally is. I think that happens with most leagues, you know, and I'm, uh, I'll be the first to say and admit that, uh, you know, the ACC has kicked our butts, you know, lately, there's no question. I mean, Carolina's 
lineup is um, is about as good a, of a lineup as I've ever seen, to be honest, right? So that's going to be tough to beat. But with, you know, next year's schedule, adding Oklahoma and Texas to it, uh, the perspective has, it sort of have to change for us coaches in the SEC. We have to, um, you know, winning an SEC championship may be almost as, if not harder, than winning an NCAA tournament. It is very possible in the SEC tournament next year, you'll face a, a top four ranked team in the quarters, in the semis, and in the finals. And you got to do it in back to back to back days. So, um, you know, being an SEC champion, adding those teams is going to be awfully tough to do. And, uh, uh, and we take obviously great pride in the SEC, but there's no question that. Uh, the ACC um, has had some marvelous years, and they have a lot of talent in their league too, no doubt. Yeah, I, I, I think you really raised a great point there. I have always felt that the NCAA, when it was at the final location with multiple days in a row, it's just difficult because the players never have that. I think the national indoors, for example, with four consecutive days in a row playing the top teams, that there's just only a couple times where they don't get a chance to actually catch their breath, right? Their bodies have to recover and they have to pressure perform day after day after day. So that that definitely gives, um, yeah, you spin the narrative differently when you think about it that way. So I appreciate that, that take. Uh, Coach Jeremy, he actually worked many years ago, right, under Coach Andy Jackson. So I remember talking to him about boy players at Kalamazoo, et cetera, et cetera. And now he's over on the girls' side. Talked a little bit about the, the assistant coaches with, with Sam Minix and obviously what, what Jeremy's job is or his role is in, in this particular program and how he's handled the shift from the men's side to the women. Different than who you just recently had leave, Coach Brian, who won the title on the women's side and then came to the men. Like that's a that takes a very strong skill set and, and interpersonal communication, not just coaching. Talk to me a little bit about Jeremy's role at, at Florida. Yeah, I had the great pleasure of working with him, you know, alongside him, you know, when he was with Andy for what, eight or nine years. So I knew him really well. Obviously, we uh, we had a great relationship, talked every day, saw him work, saw the work he did with the amazing talent that Andy had. You know, the, he had to take those players to practice with Roger Federer in Europe, so on and so forth. So I, I know that Jeremy has seen tennis at, at the very, very highest level. I also know how he communicates. I know what kind of man he is with the values. He's married to a three-time national champion gymnastics coach, Ron Dauphine, you know, so he, you know, like it's, it, it's all, it's a championship DNA is what I, I knew we were going to get that. But, um, you know, he's, he's fantastic in, in coaching wise. He is meticulous. He allows me to be the big picture guy and he mops up all the details. Nothing falls through the cracks with this guy. And so um, he last year when he came in, he took over sort of the doubles part for sure of our program. And boy, it made uh, a big difference. We were 22 and eight in doubles points. And I thought we weren't um, all that great, to be honest. And But he made us play a lot more effective uh, and uh, aggressive doubles just in in – matter of weeks and then adding sam to it has been a real pleasant surprise really obviously we we saw sam as a player and knew her reputation we never had the real pleasure of uh, competing against her but everybody just spoke so highly of her and um so we were hoping to get somebody who was coming in sort of bright-eyed wanted to learn and you know but she is just uh, jumping right in and helping right away she was instrumental in 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 leading uh, Emily to win a regional championship here. She had her every match, you know, beating Carol Lee from Georgia Tech, who's top 10, uh, so on and so forth. So Sam adds not just some youthful, uh, you know, enthusiasm, but she adds a lot of class, a lot of knowledge, and has proven to be a really, really good communicator on the court, too. So I think we have just about as good of a, uh, you know, trio as, as anybody. And so, you know, if we don't mess it up, I think our players uh, have a good shot. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the fact that they've stepped up and allowed that third coach in college tennis. I, I'm interested to see over the year how that impact. Most people will have a volunteer at major right. events and things. So there's three people and you can just cover two courts instead of three. But this 
the the communication, the eyes, the being able to manage someone emotionally by having the third quality coach out there and, and, and supporting that financially. I think it's a big step in the right direction for NCAA college tennis. And I'm excited to, with the new uh, ESPN deal, the NCAA's eight straight years of actually being able to be covered and covered well, yep. to hopefully see, you know, you guys back in the hunts there. So I, I think it's all going in the right direction. This college match day has been near and dear to my heart. One of my favorite pictures is me holding the mic up like I'm reaching as high as I can to get up to your mouth because obviously you're way taller than me. But that's one of my favorite pictures back from Gainesville when I first started doing college match days in 2014. So we we go way back on this. Uh, Texas A&M? Really- it was Texas A&M? It was. Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, back in 2014. So I was really Great fun. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting up there, my friend. But everybody <laughs> says that you love soccer. So what I want to know is, are you right. still playing soccer or are the knees not able to hold up? No, I'm still playing. Yeah, we practice Wednesday nights and game Sunday mornings. Yeah, I mean, I'll do that until I'm, you know, abs- they have to strap me down because I love it. Uh, which is awesome. What's your favorite team? Uh, Tottenham Hotspur, since I was a little kid. Yeah, fell in love with them, uh, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, you know, Ardiles and Ricky Villa and those guys, they scored. When you watched uh, the the – English league back then, it was all 1 0, 1 1, you know, nil nil. But not when you watch Tottenham. It was 5 4, 4 3, 4 all. And so I just fell in love with the way they played. And I've been a big fan since I was a kid. And there were some dark days there when they got dropped into the championship. But, uh, you know, I really like what's going on there now. And I, I, I won't miss a game. Wow, that's outstanding. I love that. It's nice to have some balance. I'm still banging away on the drums a little bit. And that definitely keeps me balanced as well. There you go. So- this this match with Florida State is going to be exciting. It's a night match. Men and right. women playing at the same time don't get that atmosphere too often. Clearly, I've seen some unbelievable atmospheres over there at Orlando before. Hoping to have another great one. Looking forward to this one. And I think your team is strong. So hopefully you can find a way to get four points and get yourself a W. Really appreciate you coming in for an interview and, and talking and catching up and looking forward to seeing you in a great season. Best of luck and everything, obviously, with Baylor coming up and all the other matches. And we are definitely going to have a wonderful night down in Orlando on February 3rd. Thanks, Roland. Thanks for having me, Mark. Look forward to seeing you in person. Yep. All the best. <laughs>